Eric is 25, a student in audiovisual studies. He's been painting graffiti across Paris for the last five years. His self-confessed speciality, tag vandal, jargon for leaving his signature on walls and trains. He's agreed to introduce his gang, known as the VX. Five young men and one young girl, all aged between 25 and 30. Some are students, others work. There's a messenger, a nurse, even a designer. In his backpack, Eric has spray paint and special marker pens with indelible ink. The night mission they are about to undertake is a risky one. Inside the metro, the Paris underground train system. We'll be down on the actual tracks near a station. And when the train pulls up to let people on and off, that's when we cross over the rails and tag the train in just the few seconds that it stopped. It's just for the fun of it, the challenge, the adrenaline rush. It's 10 o'clock in the evening at an underground station close to the Place de la Nation in the heart of Paris. The gang spreads out along the platform. Just between their feet, the live rail packs a 750-volt punch, easily enough to kill anyone that touches it. And at any time, a train could run them over. It's risky, but a final touch to blind the CCTV camera, and the gang is away. Isn't this vandalism? Yep. It's not the first time the gang has attacked an underground station. The penalty for this kind of continual defacing of public property is up to five years in prison and a fine of 75,000 euros, the equivalent of $100,000. But the VX gang is long gone. A few days later, Eric is in his small studio apartment in the suburbs of Paris. He keeps his face hidden. After five years of tag vandals, he knows the authorities are looking for him. In his room, some trophies from his more recent expeditions. Well, I stole this from the metro. Uh, it's one of their bits of uh, canvas. Uh, I sort of went crazy painting it. But it belongs to the, the metro. Yeah, well, the metro belongs to the graffitists. <laughs> like most graffiti artists, Eric keeps an album of souvenir snapshots that form a prized collection of all his exploits. Dozens of photos of tagged trains across France and also abroad in such places as London and Barcelona. Everywhere, the same four letters, S-I-E-R, which spell out Sierre, his tag, or alias in the graffiti world. This is a regional express which serves the Gare d'Austerlitz. But don't you feel bad about having damaged it? Well, it's not damaged, it's just color. And it's ever so pretty when it pulls into the station. But the deed of which Sierre is most proud is not a train, but an airplane, and a special plane at that. Oh, one night with some friends, I had this sudden mad urge to, to leave graffiti on the Concorde. It was like, in, like a military zone, a sort of museum. It was a bit hard to get in, but once we made it, it was quite relaxed, actually.
But why put graffiti on a plane? Well, it was the challenge and the pride afterwards to say we'd graffitied the Concorde, which doesn't fly anymore these days. So it all went well. Well, it ended with us hiding from the police and the military in the bushes for three hours. They chased us, but none of us were caught. But it was close. My family or my friends that aren't into graffiti don't understand why I take so many risks. But the point is not to get addicted. Because once you are, it's like drugs. Uh, there's no way out. Once a month, Eric heads out of town to participate in tag vandal excursions. This weekend, he's going to Grenoble. He gets his gear ready, including cans of spray paint stolen from DIY stores. But he prepares his own marker pens, making the ink as indelible as possible. I add pigments, uh, different colors. You sort of heat them up on the cooker to uh, burn off any, any water, and that makes the ink really indelible. Because we want our tags to, to last for as long as possible. Oops, I've spilt some. See, his concoctions seem to work. So he sets off for a graffiti weekend in Grenoble in a good mood. When he arrives, there's a welcoming committee. Other taggers, Sierre from Paris and Fame from Grenoble, first met three years ago, and they now visit each other regularly. On this kind of weekend, all we do is graffiti, talk graffiti, eat graffiti, sleep graffiti. Uh, that's all we do. Like everywhere else, Grenoble has its share of graffiti. Last year, the bill for cleaning up graffiti in the town came to the equivalent of half a million dollars. <coughs> First stop is the home of one of the taggers. The gang gathers in the basement. Uh, this is where I keep my spray paints. How many have you got? Well, there's about a hundred. Wow, that's a lot. All the kit, in fact, for the perfect tagger. A hundred cans of different colored paint. Pliers to cut through the security fences at the railway depot. And even carnival masks. Well, we wear the masks to, to hide our faces when we're painting. Uh, this, this one's mine. And finally, latex gloves. Why you wear gloves to stop leaving fingerprints on the spray cans. Uh, we even wipe the spray cans afterwards, so there's no need to worry about fingerprints. Isn't that a bit much? Well, it's better safe than sorry. Best to take all the necessary precautions ahead of time. Besides, it only takes three seconds and it's done. The next morning, and the team is ready for action. Their target is the railway depot. Yeah, we're getting ready for the crime. On a piece of paper, someone sketched out the graffiti they plan to create. With just one phrase, the world is ours. It's from the film Scarface, uh, a little Tony Montana with spray paint. I like the words, the world is ours. The hit is underway. The security fencing around the depot had been discreetly cut a few days beforehand. And it takes the taggers less than a minute to reach their objective. Before starting, though, one final precaution. 
Vas-y, pendant que tu traces, je vais, aller, je, vais la, je vais les mettre à la tête. Je vais mettre la clé dans la porte de la police ici. Voilà, la clé dans ma poche. All right, let's put the key in my pocket. Ça quoi, ça? Well, why do you do that? Well, just to buy us some time, just in case. Well, in case what? Well, so that if the police come by car, we'll have enough time. They'll open the gate with their keys, but we've put our own lock now, so it'll slow them down. But uh, let's hope it doesn't come to that. The tagging can begin. They intend to cover an entire carriage. And for the first five minutes, all goes smoothly. Oh, there's some guys cleaning up over there. Come on, let's uh, let's head out of here. No, it's okay, they're going. No, it's okay, they're just cleaners, it's all right. The taggers aren't sure. Sierra wants to make sure the way is clear. Well, I just want to check. Uh, this wasn't meant to be the way it would work. Aren't you worrying a bit too much? Maybe, but better to be paranoid than being locked up. The danger seems to have passed, and the taggers resume their work. It takes 25 minutes to complete a fresco like this one. Uh, so, what's uh, this feel like? Uh, it's nothing else like it. It's a, it's a unique feeling. It's like shooting up a really strong adrenaline rush. After this, I'm going home to have Sunday lunch with my parents. Uh, just as if nothing had happened. If they're caught, they'll be charged with damaging property and face the same stiff penalties of imprisonment and heavy fines. Yeah. Right. But why don't you just paint on the walls and the street? It's, uh, surely it's much safer. No, I know, but it's, uh, it's much prettier on a train. It'll travel around and people will see it. Lots of people. So it's cool. You know, I'm proud of it. I did it. I like it. Well, it's nice. The taggers know the train will be scrubbed clean in a matter of days. So to immortalize their deed, it's time for the traditional group photo. and just enough time to admire their handiwork before leaving. That evening in town, the gang relaxes at the end of the weekend. After the excitement, stress and rush of adrenaline, it's time to reflect. It's art, no matter what anyone says. People used to be sent to prison in the past for expressing their feelings or revolt through their art. Now, I'm not saying that my graffiti means I want a revolution, but it's, it's a way of getting a message across. One day I'm a student, the next I'm working. I feel I'm being forced to do these things somehow. So through these sort of things, my art, uh, I interpret it like stealing from time to time, uh, a way of getting uh, a little of my own back. Uh, that way the system isn't totally screwing me over. That's my message. It's taking the risks, feeling like I'm not stuck in a rut, that I'm not losing my soul having to make a living. It's a conscious decision to live my life my way, not to be entirely dependent on the system, not just to be a brick in the wall.